The Stanford Prison Experiment. It is probably the most well-known social psychology study ever conducted. It is a pillar in Psych 101 courses and found in most textbooks. If you've ever taken an Intro to Psych class, you have probably heard of this study. And if you haven't, you might still know it because it was so influential it permeated into all areas of pop culture. There are movies and documentaries, podcasts, books, hell, it is literally a trope on reality TV shows. It goes beyond that, like the study solidified the career of Zimbardo, who was the guy that conducted this experiment, and he even went on to become president of the APA, the American Psychological Association, in 2002, mostly because his career was built off of this study. It's landed him book deals and movie deals, it's crazy. We have viewed this study as groundbreaking and influential and we used it in congressional testimony like it's more than just taught in every class like it has greatly affected lives the thing is it's bad science it's super bad science and honestly it blows my mind that most people can't see the bad science for what it is but don't worry guys i'm gonna break this down i'm gonna go over the study why it's bad science and what what zimbardo tried to teach us with this and what he actually taught us the study isn't worthless there is still a lot of value to it just not what he tried to portray it as. Before I get started, you know the deal. Like this video, subscribe to my channel, turn on the bell notification, and let's do this. So, Philip Zimbardo, he was a professor at Stanford. He was a tenured professor, and he designed this study. And I'll give you a little bit of background about the study. So he took 24 participants. He had placed an ad in the paper, and it was uh, I forget exactly the details, but I know that he paid them $15 an hour, which or $15 a day. He paid them good money for the time, that's all that matters. And it was mostly Caucasian males. And there was one Asian American, so like such diversity. So they were mostly Caucasian college students. And he, at random, divided them into two groups of 12. So it was gonna be prisoners and guards. And nine were participating and then three were backup for both sides. So he had told them at some point, you know, the inmates, are going to be arrested and brought to the Stanford County Jail, which was somewhere in, I think, the basement of a Stanford University building. And the guards were going to be there to rule the, <laughs> rule the roost, I guess. And he likes us to believe that the study started when the inmates were arrested. He actually called the local news crews to have them come in and videotape this so that it, I don't know, I guess it felt more real. So they were blindfolded and taken to the Stanford County Jail where they didn't know where it was, like, because they couldn't see where they went. And from there, they, you know, played their roles and were led to believe that one of the inmates ended up having a mental breakdown and, like, had to leave early. One of the inmates came in and caused, like, a hunger strike because the treatment was so cruel. The guards started acting crazy and very authoritarian. And they were demanding the inmates to do things that just kind of... <laughs> dehumanized them. They made them put stocking caps on their heads because they couldn't actually shave their heads. That was to replicate being bald. They made them wear gowns. They made them drop and do push-ups and like, you know, inappropriate, like they're not wearing underwear. So yeah, I guess the study was supposed to go on for two weeks and I think about six days in, the details don't really matter to me, but uh, approximately six days in, Zimbardo's then girlfriend, now wife, came in and saw the study. Now she wasn't the first person to come in and view this study, but she was the first person to say, yo, bro, this, this is unethical, we can't be doing this. And at which point Zimbardo snapped out of it, realized, oh shit, this is unethical, we gotta let them go, and closed the study early. From there, he went on to release his findings to the New York Times. It's a little funny, right? New York Times? Like, that's not a research journal, is it? Hmm. Okay, so... The purpose of Zimbardo's study was to show how power dynamics and situational and circumstantial events, stuff like that, can really affect you and change you. And it's not that the guards were bad people, but they were just put in this certain situation that kind of elicited this type of response. And then the inmates were completely powerless and it caused like a mental breakdown. Hence why the one student like, I'm burning up in here, don't you know? There's actually video footage from this, like there's audio and video footage, which is really cool.
Now, this study was huge. Shortly after the study was released, there was like a prison riot and it got really bad somewhere, I think in California, and they used this study to like testify for these people and like the guards that killed inmates and it's like not corrupt it's just the situation and the power and blah blah blah. Now let me tell you a little bit about what actually happened with this study. Zimbardo didn't actually design this study. That's the thing. He had an undergraduate student named David Jaffe who ended up being his assistant on this study. He designed it for a project or some sort of class thing that Zimbardo had, it was like an open-ended question or assignment that he had done and Jaffe had conducted a three-day simulation, prison simulation. And in it, Jaffe had his guards use very draconian style rules, like very authoritative and manipulative and it was bad. But Zimbardo loved it. He ate it up. He loved the drama and the tears and the excitement. And he went on to recreate the study as what we know as the Stanford Prison Experiment based off of Jaffe's design. And Jaffe was not mentioned in most situations. Like, I had never heard of this guy before. So, Zimbardo had already planned out how this was gonna go and what he wanted to demonstrate with it, if that makes sense. So he put a very heavy thumb on the scales in his favor. The experiment didn't start the day the guys were arrested. The experiment started the day prior when the guards were pulled into a room and instructed by Jaffe on how to react, how to elicit certain responses from them without crossing any legal boundaries because they couldn't actually abuse them or hurt them. It's a college study for Christ's sakes, but Zimbardo even had a consultant, if you will, that Jaffe had introduced him to named Carlo Prescott. And he was a former former inmate felon from San Quentin prison and he basically told these guys what to do. These guys weren't reacting because that's how you innately behave when you become a guard. He was actually giving them examples from his experience in prison. Now we're taking like these college white boys and trying to make them behave in a way that this poor man had experienced in prison and it's it just mind-blowing that we're trying to say that, that that's the normal response. That's how anybody would react if put in that situation. Zimbardo knew what he was doing. He knew how to get the results he wanted, and he did that. And there's even video footage or audio footage of the assistant, Jaffe, instructing people to be more authoritative, to be more mean, to kind of elicit that response. And there were certain key, I guess, participants from the study. There was one participant as a guard named Dave Eshelman and he played the character John Wayne and he started talking with the southern draw and he he was an actor. He actually saw this as an improv situation where he could behave in a certain way and lead the guys, lead the lead the guards actually, sorry. He led the guards to react a certain way and he felt like he was doing something good. He felt like he was doing social justice, if you will. Zimbardo was big on prison reform, and that was the intention of this, I guess, but he ended up making people feel like prison is the way it is and will always be that way and can never be changed because people act that way in that situation. There was also an inmate named Douglas Corby who went on to be a, a professional, I think, forensic psychologist, and he was the inmate that had the mental breakdown. He actually had his GRE testing the following week, like after the study ended. For those of you that don't know, it's basically like an SAT but for psychology and it's crazy intense. And he needed to study and thought that this experiment would be a good time for him to study because he'd be an inmate not doing much. Well, they wouldn't let him have his textbooks. So he tried to ask to leave. They told him no. Um, he ended up faking the mental breakdown because Zimbardo implied that that was the only way he could get out of there. It's just crazy. It's not that this study is... <sighs> The study does have value, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Instead of showing us about how power dynamics and situations and our circumstances influence us, we should be looking at how we like to please authority. How obedient we are to those that we respect and view with power. So Zimbardo was very involved in this study. It was not, it was completely biased, but the participants really reacted in a way that would make him happy. Dave Eshelman or, Eshelman, or however you say it, John Wayne, he did so perfectly. He felt good after that study. He felt like he did a good thing, he did something for psychology, and he, he just genuinely thought that he did the right thing. But he was reacting that way because it made Zimbardo proud. And then you think about um, Douglas Corpy. He reacted that way because that is how Zimbardo said the only way he could leave. So we are very obedient to authority figures 
in order to please them. And I think that's a very interesting angle from that study. Not the one that Zimbardo wanted us to take from it, but it, it's still what it is. As far as like the science, this is more of like a demonstration, I guess, than like an experiment. You know, there is no, there's no control group. There's no way to make this unbiased because we all have a mental idea of what a guard and what an inmate is. And there's no dependent variable, you know? The only independent variable was them being assigned prisoner or guard, and that's it. And then Zimbardo was so involved in it. The conductor or designer of a research study should never be that involved. And he tried to play it off like he got sucked up into it and caught up in the moment, and then when his girlfriend came in, it snapped him out of it or whatever. He knew what he was doing. This study would have never made it into a scientific research journal, hence why he went right to the New York Times. Hence why he had his local news reporters record it. Hence why he did video and audio recordings. Like, this guy knew what he was doing, and he's a genius, don't get me wrong. But it really backfired on him because he meant to do it for prison reform. But it has really made people think that no matter what, we're going to behave like this, which I guess his idea was that we need to revamp the entire prison system, which we do, but it's like a complete overhaul isn't going to happen. And his study has shown basically that without a complete overhaul, nothing is going to change. That's all I have for this study. I have more controversial psychology studies in mind to do next. I think I'm going to do Rat Park, I'm going to do Pavlov's Dogs, Little Albert. I don't know. I spent a lot of time researching this one because Greg and I are working on a video about a fight club at the local York County prison, which is true. Guards were charged and yeah, it was a big, big deal. But everything I kept looking, I wanted to give you more than just the facts. I didn't want to regurgitate the news. I wanted to give you like commentary and educate you a little bit about why guards behave that way. Why prisoner violence and prisoner abuse happens. And every study kept citing this Stanford prison experiment. And it's like, you guys, this is bad science. Like, it's 2019. How can you not see that this is bad science? But it's just been socially accepted as valuable and influential for so long. I don't expect it to go away anytime soon. But now you guys know the truth behind it. You know that it is valuable, but just not why people think it's valuable. So leave me a comment. Let me know what you thought. If you have any questions, any suggestions for controversial psychology studies to do next. I'll see you in the next video, guys. Bye.